Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge and welcome to this Flower Pro introduction of a brand new member of the Flower Pro family. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to use the new Flower Pro Easy Flower Hoop. So this innovative hoop will enable you to make basically designer look toppers for your wedding cake with ease. So it's really innovative and can be used for craft, it could be used for cake, it could be used for home decor and all sorts of other applications. So let's get started. So these are my Flower Pro Easy Flower Hoops. And as you can see, there are actually are three options. So first of all, we have the clear acrylic. Now, the clear one, all right, this one can be used with your flower spray to the left or to the right of your arrangement. So you can use this in top of a cake this way, or you can use it in this way, okay? Um, this is good for a neutral look if you're wanting something more modern, contemporary. Um, obviously the clear acrylic is a really good choice, and, uh, but obviously this can be used in lots of different ways and with lots of different color combinations. Now the MDF, which is a wood composite, this is MDF. Again, when this is obviously laser cut, you're gonna get this almost charring on the edge, which gives a very nice rustic look. So if you're doing like a barn wedding, rustic wedding cake, you know, naked, semi-naked cake, uh, this works perfect with a lot of my uh, rustic things like my antlers, my pine cones, Christmas type of arrangements, but also can be used for um, example for a you know, just a normal one. So if you were doing, say, like a garden wedding, so this is an MDF one where I've got pink uh, roses, anemones, berries, forget-me-nots. Um, so again, you know, this will obviously work very well with traditional colors as well. And like, again, for a garden outside wedding, this is a nice look. Now with the MDF, um, the MDF, um, so you have obviously one side is going to have this slight charring, and then the other side is going to be just plain wood. And uh, I'm gonna talk in a moment about also painting these because you can uh, paint these also, this wooden one. And then this is the mirror finish. Now the mirror finish you can only really use one way because the other side has the gray, which you could use, all right? But as I said, traditionally as I said, this one I would only recommend using it with the spray this side, all right? Now when you are using um, the hoops, the um, obviously MDF is ready to go. Um, when you're using the clear one, there is like a protective film on here. So you just need to take this off of both sides, all right? You can see it's sort of cloudy, so you take this off of both sides and that will be then ready to go, okay? And then when you do the silver one, again, this has a protective, obviously to give you this nice mirror image and so it doesn't get scratched. You're just gonna, again, just take this off. So you're just gonna start the tape and pull this off and this is going to come off to give you your mirror finish, all right? And um, so those are the sort of basically how we prep the, uh, the, the hoops ready for use. Now, Katie Sue have, um, obviously Katie Sue have several uh, different types of hoops. And uh, so in their existing range, they have these are the cake toppers. So they come in all different sizes um, in acrylic. And they also have in their regular ones, they have rose gold and gold and things as well. So when actually I used, I introduced my wedding foliage mold. This was the beautiful cake I made with the topper on here. This was actually done with the silver uh, hoop with the Mr. and Mrs. And I actually used that on the bottom tier of the cake. So it sort of lent up against the cake. So again, you've got lots of options in using these. And there is a separate YouTube on how to actually do this foliage hoop. The difference between this one, this is all wired onto the hoop, whereas with the Easy Flower hoop, this really means everybody can get that designer pro look uh, with ease just by threading the wires into the hole. So this really, as I said, is not as complicated or you don't have as, have as much skill in floristry or taping or wiring um, to use the new product, okay? So really nice uh, hoop and can be used in lots of different ways. Um, and there are other um, things we can do with the hoops. So you can, um, so for example, you can spray paint the hoops. So you can actually take your hoops here and you can actually spray paint this. So you could actually paint this with a spray paint. So then this would be like a painted version. So I've just spray painted this. Um, you could also do with like shabby chic look, a uh, whitewash look. You could actually take some sort of glaze or some chalk paint and you could go over this just lightly. So you're gonna sort of still see the sort of MDF underneath it for a really nice for a rustic wedding. But of course these could be spray painted in all different color combinations. You could do sponging techniques, faux finishing. So there's lots of ways to do this. You can also even with this one, um, for example, you could you could do this in uh, say gray, and then you could put glue on there, and then you could sprinkle silver glitter on there. So if you wanted it really blinged up, there's lots and lots of ways of using these. All right. So the MDF one is the best one to use for painting. Now, also other things you can also do is, uh, for example, you can take uh, ribbons 
Um, so for example, this is like a sort of a mauve colored ribbon, sort of similar color to what I have actually in the uh, spray here. Uh, same sort of like color, color ribbon. So this would be a nice alternative if you wanted to bring in some obviously ribbon color uh, to match or contrast color. You can just literally, all I did there, made a little knot on the ribbon and threaded it through. I just used uh, your companion tool or like, for example, a scribe needle or a pin, uh, a needle, just sort of push that through. And then of course you could thread this through in a contrast color. All right, and you can wrap this all the way around. Now this serves um, only not only decorative, but also an alternative to sort of wiring things. And if you're using lots of smaller flowers, you can actually just tuck the wire, the little wire stems, you can actually tuck those in amongst the ribbon. A little bit more like the technique I used for my, uh, my wedding foliage one. Um, you could also do, uh, this is for example, some twine. So you could use some sort of twine, again, if you're doing a rustic look. This works really well with like things like my antlers, my pine cones, that more rustic look. So if you were doing a wedding, like for example, this is a wedding cake knife where I actually wrapped uh, twine around the handle for a sort of barn wedding I did. And um, so if you're going for that sort of look, this is another way of obviously adding that little sort of rustic element here. And then of course, again, you can tuck things in amongst the ribbons as, and wire the twine, as well as obviously using the holes here as well. Okay, and then there are also um, other uh, things you can buy on the market. These are uh, used for floristry. So it's just, it's like colored wire for flower arrangements and it comes in metallic and this is all flexible red. You know, here we have like a metallic purple color. So again, this is a nice way uh, for example, you could do that on the MDF and wrap this around instead of the floral tape I'm going to show you next. Uh, this is a good way to bring in color and this would be fun on say for example a 40th wedding anniversary topper or if you were doing like a, um, a rustic Christmas topper, a holiday topper for a cake with poinsettias and berries. This ties in very very nicely with that whole look. So now we're gonna move on to prep some wires. Now, um, if you've watched my uh, wedding foliage hoop, this is very much the technique I use there to give some additional sort of support for the flowers. But also if you don't have flowers with tendrils, um, then this is a good way just to bring in that little sort of nice element at the end. Now floral tape, I'm using half width floral tape. Um, I'm using here light green, but you can also, for example, do brown, you could do gray. We also have floral tapes available. Um, you can buy in uh, colors like in pink, it comes in silver, in gold, so yellow, lots of different options there. So what we're gonna do here is I'm using here a 26 gauge wire. Okay, so generally 26. If you were doing sort of heavier flowers, you could use a 24, but generally a 26 is nice and easy to wrap around. So all I'm doing here is I'm just gonna tape from the bottom of the wire to the top. And then when I get to the end of the wire, okay, so when I get to the end of the wire there, I'm just gonna carry on twisting with my floral tape, very much like I make my pine needles. If you watch my um, Nicholas Lodge collection, uh, pine cones, you just literally just twist in the floral tape here. And if you don't have, if you've already got some wires covered, you can just make these tendrils separately. So see, this is where the wire finishes. And then what you would then do is you'll take your companion tool and literally I'm just gonna wrap this around the companion tool like this. This is how we do like sweet pea tendrils. So when you take this off, you're gonna get these like, just these little curly cues. And then you can also add some additional ones of those if you want to, like a couple of these down the stem. So again, it's gonna go around a couple of times with some floral tape. Just gonna take your tape and again, just gonna start twisting. So you see how I'm just literally twisting between my fingers here. And this is gonna give me my little tendril here. All right, you can just make those as long as you want. And again, we're just gonna, just gonna take your tendrils. So being that they're just floral tape, um, they have a nice soft organic look to them. And you can do like two or three little tendrils on here, you see? So again, but this isn't actually um, always necessary. In fact, the two hoops I have here, um, I don't have tendrils on them. Um, the one that I have here, uh, because this already has, this has got like a eucalyptus leaves, the eucalyptus has these tendrils at the end of it. And you can see they're just like wrapping around the, the stem here. Um, but uh, in the other spray I have here, and this one here, you can see I've just obviously got here my fern. So I have a fern at the top and the fern at the bottom, but I could totally add some little tendrils there as well. Um, but it does add a nice sort of organic look to the, uh, to the arrangement. 
But as I said, this is a very um, easy to, to work with. Um, and if your fingers are a little sticky with the floral tape, if you just take a little bit of corn flour, corn starch on your fingers, that will just help you get a little bit of traction. But as I said, this is how we do when we do grapes. Um, and uh, when I do, um, for example, like sweet peas and uh, twist the floral tape also for my, um, when I do my pine cones as well, my pine cones and needles. So here you can see we've got the little tendrils there like that, okay? But you can see like that would be a brown one. So you've got lots of different choice there and you can also just use just uh, the green wire as well. Now, in addition, when we are putting the flowers on, you might need to put some wires around the hoop to sort of just help to secure flowers. Um, and uh, as you go, um, so it's a good idea to have some covered wires as well, but you can also just stop and make them as you need them as well. So as you can see with the um, hoop, all right, the uh, easy flower hoop, there are these holes, all right, which obviously you've got four small holes each side. And then you obviously have this configuration of holes. So, but this can be used in, as I said, lots of different ways, all right, as far as like you can just put single flowers in here, like little blossoms, like forget-me-nots. Um, and for craft application, you could just glue those in. Make sure you use a glue that's suitable for acrylic, for example. Um, on the rustic wood one, you could just use a PVA glue. But, um, and then of course here, you could just do like maybe two roses or a peony or a larger flower here as well. So this would work for more of a contemporary with fewer flower arrangement also. And you can see here, like if you just use like a couple of large peonies and then like, for example, some foliage, you could actually, the foliage will also cover over those hoops, you see? So you can actually then those small little holes in the end here, the four holes and four holes, you could have peony leaves there and peony leaves there. All right, then you could just have maybe like two peonies. So this works really. And remember this, the acrylic one and the MDF one, you can use this way or you can use this way, all right? So of course, like, so for example, this spray here, all right, you can see how this is a spray here. This is obviously um, used this way, all right? But you could also do it the total opposite way as well. All right, so really it depends on what way you want this to go onto your cake. Um, of course, you can use this for home decor as well. You could put this into a vase and I'm gonna talk a little bit about displaying these as well um, afterwards. But um, so you're going to take your, your hoop here, all right? And so with my hoop, now as far as your flowers go, when we are making, for example, roses, all right, if you follow my, you know, Flower Pro roses, so this is like, for example, a David Austin rose made in my Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club. So just like in my roses in book one, when you generally make roses, you're going to be adding extra wires to make the rose stems look thicker. But because we have to actually thread these through the holes, when you're doing things like your roses, you just wanna use a single like 20 gauge wire in the case of the medium size rose, uh, you don't add the extra wires, all right? Because if your wires are too thick, it makes it difficult to bend these in. I'm going to use a couple of ferns, all right? So I'm going to start off with my ferns. So I have my ferns here. And um, again, when you make the ferns, all right, the ferns are on, obviously we've added like a 22 gauge wire there. So you can take um, that wire and then you're just gonna just thread the wire through and just using your uh, tweezer or pliers, in the case of obviously something heavier, I'm just gonna put the wire through. So you see how I've just threaded the wire through there like so. And then I can just literally just take this wire here and just gonna cut this so you see what I've done is I've just wrapped this around, all right? So you see this is gonna form the, so you see literally as they just go in, in and out of the holes, and then I'm going to then balance that with another for on the other side. So you see, I'm just gonna go through, and then literally, as I said, with your pliers, just bend that at an angle. So this will just sort of sit flat against the, and then again, I'm just gonna come around here So this is a 22 gauge wire, so this is gonna just give me the, the shape. So you see how I've actually sort of formed the, the hoop here, so you can see how I've got the hoop there. And again, you can just take these, just use some wire cutters, I'm just gonna take those. This will give me my, as I said, my fur. And so this is really just obviously giving me my foundation, okay? Now, so in a case like this, you would probably need to use, obviously you'd have um, like even numbers like you know, it's obviously got two ferns, one fern here and one fern there, so it's a nice way. But you could also totally just use one fern at the top and then a rose leaf there. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. Now I'm going to add in my rose bud. So I'm going to add in a rose bud. But you see the technique is you basically pull it through, all right? And then with your pair of pliers, going to bend it up. 
So you see how, and then again, I'm just going to wrap around here. See? And you can actually also tuck. So for example, you can tuck wires into here as well. But just trim things as you go. Because the back of this will just have a, a sort of like almost a little bit like a vine look to it. But you see how those are those are sort of staying on here totally, um, they're totally stable on here. And um, so then what I'm going to do then, I'm going to add um, some leaves. So I'm going to put in a small set of leaves here. So I have a small set of leaves. I'm just going to just trim these down. So just trim these down. And then these are going to tuck. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to actually just tuck that in, just tuck that underneath. So you see how what I've actually done is I've just threaded that. So you just tuck that wire underneath and then you see how that's going to give stability. So just make sure that everything seems nice and stable. Now you can also, when you're doing um, this, uh, if you're doing to put flowers in more just upright like that, you can even get away without using a calyx on them, you see? So you can do it without using a calyx on if you're going to just sort of have flowers like peonies or roses upright. So again, it depends a little bit on what sort of detail you're going into. And of course, this could also be used for silk flowers as well. Um, obviously, the Flower Pro is beautiful to use for this because it emulates sort of more of a natural look, but you could totally do this with uh, silk flowers. You can even use this for fresh flowers as well. And I'm just going to add, um, so I'm just going to put down here, I'm going to add another smaller rose leaf. So again, you see, I'm just going to just tuck that. So you can see here where the, where the wire is there. I'm just going to just tuck that. So this makes it very easy to do. You see then the, the leaf will just sort of sit onto there like so. Okay, so you're just going to have the, have the leaf there. So you'll have your little leaf and that will sit into there. So just make sure everything feels quite, quite sort of tight. Now, when you are, you know, have like, for example, things here where you have little loops that you want to just secure, you can also just take, for example, just like a piece of the wire we covered with the floral tape and you can literally just almost make just like a little wire, just twist tie, like just twist that around. See, and that will help to secure that in. You can just tuck that into, so you can do this as you, as you go if you need to. Um, you can do the, that with um, obviously the wires and then you can just sort of trim these off, you see. And then also with the, um, the one with the tendril, you see, this can be used, uh, for example, you can take this wire here. So if you wanted like some tendrils and things, you could actually just take this in and then you see you can actually use this to help to secure the wires as well. But you see how you can actually just sort of wrap this around. You get this sort of very sort of nice organic sort of feel to this. So you're just going to just wrap your little tendrils, your little curly cues around there. You see, so you're going to get this sort of nice look. So you can see how these would just sort of wrap around like this. And then we're just going to continue now. So going to put in, um, so going to do a stephanotis here. So I'm going to add a stephanotis to my, so again, you know, these are sort of more like your filler flowers. So this is obviously made from an ultimate filler flower mold. So you can just tuck this in. Again, you can just sort of tuck the wire. So you're just going to tuck your wire into the little holes, you see? So literally, as I said, just going to put them into the holes there just to secure your Stephanotis. You see they will stay there beautifully. You see? So nice and stable. Um, I'm going to go on to put on, uh, so I'm going to do a calla lily here. So I'm going to add a calla lily. Now so the calla lily is going to sit into here. Now when I'm doing this I'm going to make the sort of central part quite symmetrical. All right, so you see how you've got this sort of central hole, you have four holes and one each side. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to put my calla lily onto here. And I'm just going to just tuck that wire into there. You see? And you can just twist these around. So you see how what you're doing is you're just creating this, just sort of wrapping this around like so. This is going to sort of sit into, into here. And then I'm going to take my other calla lily. All right, so that's going to go in the same hole on the other, the other side here. Now these flowers I'm working with here, these ones are actually air drying clay. So these are made with hardy clay. And of course you can do these. I'm going to also show you a sugar one as well. But, um, 
But just if you have, you know, when you're doing the flowers, if you're making flowers specifically for this, you would generally speaking, you're going to use, um, just you don't want too strong a wires, okay? So you can see how I've got my, so I've got my calla lily here now. Then I'm gonna take another Stephanotis. All right, so I'm just gonna bring my, I'm gonna put my, thread my wire through here so I can have my Stephanotis can come into here. Just gonna just bend the, nice thing about the air drying clay flowers is they're a little bit, um, obviously, you know, it's a little bit like working with silk flowers. They're not quite as uh, fragile. So you just, uh, just going to wrap this in here like so. So you see how I've got my, you see how I've got my calories here like this. All right. Now I'm going to take um, some, I'm going to use my roses. So I'm going to take my rose here. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the rose here. And the roses, you can pull those down. So you see how the rose will actually sit the calyx. Now, again, if you are making flowers specifically for this project, all right, you can actually do this without the ovary, all right? So because if you have the ovary on there, it's like a little bit of a ball shape. If you actually make these specifically to put in the hoop, you can actually do those without the, without the ovary on them. And then the rose will be a little bit, um, that will be a little bit, uh, obviously go a little flatter against the, against the piece here. All right, so see how you're gonna put your, your rose on there. So then I'm gonna do another rose um, onto here. So I'm gonna do that, that rose here. So I've got my roses on. So you see how you're just gonna put your roses on here. Just gonna tuck your wires. So you see, it's really, it's really easy to do because all you're doing is you're just really threading the wires through. Now, of course, as I said, this back part here it just look, will look end up when it's finished, just like almost like a vine, okay? But remember that would ultimately be the back of your, your spray anyway. And then I'm going to add in here, so I'm gonna put in some, gonna add some Stephanotis again, because the Stephanotis, you can just thread those in. So I'm gonna put in a Stephanotis bud into there. So I just have my Stephanotis bud. So it's gonna sit into there. Just get in my sort of foundation of what I'm going to use to fill in. And then I'm going to take some rose leaves here. All right, and I'm going to put some rose leaves into there. Just sort of work that into your spray. And again, you can use some wire as needed. So you can use some wire. So I'm just gonna thread some wire through here. Again, this is just gonna give me that sort of, uh, will just help to hold the, the leaves into position, okay? So it's just a question of just tucking, tucking things in as you, as you need them to go, all right? So I have my, so you can see here, I've got my, I'm starting to get my spray together now. But whereas using traditional wiring techniques, you know, when you're doing, for example, like more like wiring, that takes a little bit more um, effort. This is nice because it's sort of very easy to, for anybody to do. Remember, don't cut the wires too short and then you can just sort of tuck, tuck things in as needed. So I'm gonna put in some of my gypsophilia, my baby's breath is gonna sit into here. I'm just going to just tuck some. So you're just going to just work on your, you know, just going through your flowers here. And just could, just sort of see where your wire comes out, and then you're just going to just grab the. So here, this this is the baby's breath wire. I'm just going to pull that out here. Just going to tuck that in, so you'll have your baby's breath there. And again, just trim as you as you need to. Just sort of trim as you need to here. All right, so you can see how it's sort of it's taking shape and sort of you're getting that nice, uh, nice look there of your, of your spray, okay? And then I want to obviously come out a little bit here, so I'm gonna use some hydrangeas. So I've got sort of two little clusters of hydrangeas here. So I've done this with sort of like a, and then I'm gonna show you how to also do some wires as well. This is gonna just tuck this in because your wires in the center part there are quite tight, you can just sort of pop these, 
pop these in so you see how your hydrangeas will sit out here. I'm going to put some more hydrangeas here as well. So just a question of just, you know, just tucking the wires in and just threading the wires in to, to this piece here. All right, so I'm going to have my hydrangeas there. These ones, just want to push in just a little bit more. Here we go. So you see I've got my hydrangeas here like that. So you see I've added my hydrangeas at the, the top here. I'm just going to tuck those in. So remember the air drying clay I'm using is obviously a little bit more forgiving than sugar. So you just if you're doing a sugar one, just have to be a little bit uh, more careful. And uh, air drying clay is obviously perfect to use on a cake. I mean, it's a non-toxic product, but also the nice thing about doing this type of arrangement, this makes a really nice keepsake. So the customer, the bride um, can obviously keep this afterwards. It's a very, very nice way to um, obviously have a nice keepsake. And this looks really stunning on top of the cake. And then of course you can, so I'm just gonna just tuck in some of the baby's breath here. I'm gonna put in so you see how I'm just, just working with my, just sort of overlook your, your spray. I mean, just sort of see how things are. And again, just tuck your wires through. But just is a question of just wrapping the thing, the wrapping the wires around, all right? But you want to um, start off with getting things in, in position first. And then you can, once you get sort of the basic, sort of your basic idea and shape, um, then you can just obviously just move things around as needed, okay? And of course, if you were using a flower like, let's say for example, these are sweet peas, you see they've already got tendrils. So if you had say sweet peas at the top and sweet peas at the bottom, then of course you can just wrap those around and the buds and things will wrap around the top. So those will really, as I said, sort of help to, uh, to finish, finish things off, okay? I'm gonna put a Stephanotis bud here. I'm just gonna just thread this through. So just gonna have the Stephanotis bud. And just trim your wires as needed, all right? So you can just trim your wires as needed as you go with the spray, okay? And I'm gonna have another um, set of rose leaves. So I've got a set of three leaves here. Remember, don't cut wires too short, all right? Now, something else, um, you know, with the acrylic, generally, once you finish this, you're gonna just use a, uh, for example, just a soft um, cloth or just to get rid of the fingerprints, because you're naturally going to get little fingerprints onto here. So here I'm gonna bring in my, my rose leaves there. So you see the rose leaves are going to sort of uh, finish off the, the spray here. All right, you can see, see how the, sort of how everything's coming together, okay? And um, so then you're just gonna do a sort of an overview of how you know how this is going to to look and then i'm going to show you how to make some uh, ribbons and of course ribbons are a nice way to accent this so moving on to some ribbons um, i have here a grow grain ribbon in a sort of bright green which ties in nicely with the ferns and my color palette from the calories um, so i've measured this basically uh, 24 inches or about 60 centimeters all right so just basically using my size guide or a ruler and when we make the ribbon loop, what we're gonna do is gonna hold this in the middle, okay? And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna measure 10 centimeters or four inches from the middle of the ribbon, okay? So I'm right-handed, so I've got my thumb um, and my th first finger of my left hand, thumb underneath, and then my uh, first finger on top. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna measure four inches or 10 centimeters from here. And then this thumb is on the top and the first finger underneath, so my thumb on my left hand is underneath my thumb on my and top on my right hand is on top. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do this. So I'm gonna actually just click my thumbnails together. So you see how you just take this and you just twist this over. So what that does, that creates your loop, all right? And this is what we call a figure of eight loop. So you create this loop and then you're going to then just twist the ribbon. So what you're doing is you're doing like a mirror image. So you just twist it so you see how you're doing a mirror image. So this is called a figure of eight loop, all right? So you have loop, loop, and the tail. And then with the other end of the ribbon, you twist. And then the other end of the ribbon, you twist. All right, so what you actually do there is you have what we call double figure of eight. And then we're going to take the ribbon here, okay? And then you're gonna place the wire on the top, 
All right, this is a 26 gauge wire. Place this on the top, turn it around, and then you're going to then just twist this together. So twist this together nice and tightly. And you're gonna again, just cut this to, you know, approximate length you think you need. You're gonna take some floral tape, and I'm just gonna just tape this. Of course, you can use green or white uh, wire uh, here, depending a little bit on the color of the ribbon, but you're just gonna tape down here. And then you can trim these as long as you want. So you can do, we're gonna do what we call a French cut. So that means we're gonna cut like a swallowtail type of cut. So you see how you're gonna do like one cut this way, one cut that way. And these will be your ribbon loops, okay? And I'm gonna use these um, in amongst my flowers. So, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just add some ribbons. So I'm gonna use some ribbons here. So I'm just gonna tuck these in to my spray here. So I'm actually just gonna come through the, so I'm actually coming through the back here. So I'm gonna just add a longer one here. Again, just tuck that in. It doesn't matter if you have any, like just some odd white wires, um, you know, like from your ribbons or that. But the other thing is I would generally try and keep your, um, keep your all of your flowers with the same sort of color you know these were all done in light green floral tape um, because if you have sort of some in moss green and some in brown and whatever so generally just try and keep your colors uh, throughout there and i'm just going to add another uh, ribbon up here so again you're just going to sort of just see where your holes are there we go so i'm just going to thread this through just tuck this through a hole here Go. Just going to bring this through. So you can see, so you can add some, so I can add some, um, obviously a little bit of ribbon at the top here. And I have my baby's breath here. Just going to open these up. So you, see, so you can sort of add some ribbons at the top. These are just done with shorter stems on here. So all you do is you just cut the, when you put in the ribbons up, like more towards for filler, you're just gonna use your, uh, cut these shorter, okay? And I'm gonna put another one in here, which is going to just sort of finish this off. You just have to just sort of thread this through. So remember, this can just be threaded through the wires. There we go. So let's see, let's see where the other end comes out of that. There we go. This will just sort of fill in with your with your ribbons there, and they'll they'll stay in place really easily because you know you've got like your tight your tight wires there. So you know, you're just going to have your little tendrils um, onto here, like this. So you see, I've added the. Uh, I've added the, the ribbons here. So you see the ribbons are going to sort of help to fill in the, the top of this, all right? And then if you have any, um, you know, any sort of wires at the, the back here, you can just obviously, you really won't notice those because of the fact they're green. And of course on a MDF one or whatever, you're just gonna have that sort of natural look as well. But just if you have any, just make sure all your wires are secure, okay? And if you need to trim off any wires, you can do um, as needed. Okay, and then just gonna just tweak everything just to make sure it looks nice as far as your spray goes. Here I've got my, my obviously hydrangeas here. And then that would be sort of how you uh, finish off your loop. And then just take a soft cloth and just use this to get rid of any fingerprints, all right? Because you obviously don't want to have fingerprints onto here. And if you're setting this up at a wedding, um, what I would use is put on some uh, basically cotton gloves. So when you, once you've got this cleaned, you know, just put on a pair of cotton gloves. And then the thing is, is then when you're handling this and using it into a cake, you're not going to have any uh, issues with getting the fingerprints on there. So that is um, my first spray. All right. So this one, of course, as I said, this is all done in air drying clay. Okay. So I'm, as I said, showing you uh, obviously this first one, and I'm going to now show you one uh, in sugar, and then I'm going to uh, show you how I use these put into a cake. So here I've started on a sugar one, so very much like I showed you on the air drying clay. 
So here I'm going to use sweet peas. So I have sweet peas. These were a project done in our Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club. And uh, so these are obviously all sugar here. And um, so what I've done is I've just threaded through the sort of the, the first of the larger holes here and done the same already on the other side. So then when you do something like a sweet pea, you can just gently bring the sweet pea under. Now, of course, you have to be a little bit more careful with your, because we're using sugar here. And you see how you just would wrap those around and sort of see how the sweet peas will just be entwined to the, to the hoop. And here I'm using here the, um, using the, the uh, mirror finish one, okay? And uh, so this will be, and of course you can do this with gloves or you can just sort of clean this up afterwards. You can also take a little uh, Q-tip, a cotton wool bud, and then just uh, use that to clean up as well. All right, so you can see, so I've, basically what we've done here is you filled this up and then your leaves would be used just to fill in the, so you really won't see those small holes because they will go, they're going to be obviously covered with your, your sweet peas. Now here I have a, um, this is a, like almost a sort of a freehand leaf. And uh, so I've got this here. And so I'm just gonna just take this. But generally speaking, it, it's more suitable to use things that are not on really, really strong wires, okay? Because with this technique of using the, um, bending them and things like that. But you see how you're just gonna just sort of put the, the leaf into here. Again, I'm just gonna bring this wire around. and just sort of make sure that it crimps, just be careful here. Now also, um, these are strong, but you know, you don't want to just hold it by this, all right? You want to just sort of support this with your, with your um, hand. And uh, so then you can just pop the, so you see my sweet peas will be in here. All right, and of course with sugar ones, just going to just be a little bit more careful here, like this. And I'm gonna put in a, here, gonna put in a, leaf. So this is going to be a rose leaf. So I'm just going to tuck this in. You can also, um, if you have a piece of thick foam, like convoluted foam or just a thick foam or a pillow just to lay this on, because like if you suddenly get cramp or you need to just lay this down, just want to lay it onto a foam uh, surface. But you see how, again, you see how I'm sort of, so this one is very much, I'm doing more of a mirror image. So if you think of this this side and this side, I'm just emulating the same look each side, okay? So I've got the sort of same number of components of sweet peas. Here I have um, rosebud. So this is going to be the David Austin rosebud. So I'm just gonna just tuck this in. Again, I have a rosebud each side. I'm just gonna just sort of come out here. And again, I'm gonna come out and then you can just thread your wire through to secure that, okay? And remember the the rosebuds are on, um, they're just on a single 20 gauge wire. So again, you can see how now what I've done is I've almost like sort of balanced the two sides of my components here. And then you're gonna take your so leaves here. So I'm actually gonna just use my, so I have here a set of three rose leaves, but I'm actually going to use them singly. So I'm going to use a, Actually, two leaves are going to come in here. So I'm actually going to use just two rose leaves. So you see how what that's going to do, that's going to sort of fill in that part of the, and it's going to come through the, the middle one. There we go. Just going to pull that in just gently. You see how I'm just going to pull this through until this sort of sits, sits into here. So this is gonna just sort of fill in that center part. And again, I'm just gonna tuck that over. You see that secures everything beautifully. So you see how I've got the piece here. And then I'm gonna put my, my third leaf is gonna come from the, from the side here. Cause I'm gonna just sort of have another leaf coming out here and then the rows are gonna just sit in the middle. So what I've done here is I've made a foundation for my, uh, for my rows. You see how what I've done there is I've got three single, this is the extra large uh, Flower Pro leaf. So basically I've used the leaf singularly. These two are taped together, okay? Um, and uh, so this, this spray is also uses fewer flowers, all right? So it just gives you an idea about if you were doing just sort of something for a wedding with as fewer flowers. And then here I have a um, David Austin rose. So David Austin rose is gonna go right into the, into the middle um, 
ring here, which is going to be the same one I have with my here. Just going to move your rose leaves to the side there. Just going to tuck those in. And again, as I explained on the previous one, if you were doing this purposely to go into this spray, what I would do there is I would use, um, I would just not put the ovary on your rose so that then your, this will come into here. Just get that nice and tight and just going to bend that over. So this will just secure this into place, okay? And of course, so, so you can sort of see how your how your David Austin rose would sit here. You see, but um, and then you could add some um, can add some ribbons here. So I'm just going to put in a this is just an organza. So almost like a blush color. So it just sort of ties in with the color scheme here. I'm just going to tuck that into here. Just going to tuck that. Literally, I'm just going to tuck that into my wires. So it's going to just sort of sit into the center part here. If you find that your, you know, if you find that your your wires are a little bit uh, short, like for example on your ribbons, you could also just add a little bit of a stronger wire. This would be done with, for example, like a uh, 24 gauge wire or a 22 gauge wire. So this is very much like a flower arrangement. And the nice thing about this is that, you know, it's not, things are not sort of like set until you've sort of uh, got them in place. And then of course you also have the advantage of using this. See, so I can tuck these through. So I can tuck my ribbons through here. Just gonna put my blush ribbon and you see how I've just sort of added my blush ribbon here, okay? You see how my blush ribbon just sort of finishes off that part of the spray. And again, you can just clean that up. So, you know, as I said, if you can just put on some cotton gloves and then you can just use some cotton gloves. You can just sort of clean this with some cotton gloves or you can use, as I said, a Q-tip or a cloth here. Um, you know, you can use like, you know, basically clean silver, on handle silver. Just going to just make sure that your, everything looks good there. And this is how you would, uh, how you would do, so this shows basically a sugar, a sugar spray here ready to go into our cake. Now to put this into a cake, first of all, um, you want to find a straw. Now these are actually bubble tea straws, so they're used for bubble tea. So you can find these online, but also you can find them obviously like in Asian supermarkets, grocery stores as well, but it's called a bubble tea straw. And these are food grade, and uh, this is what you want to use this on a cake. So you see this one particular fits in perfectly into the bubble tea straw. Of course, you can get bigger size ones, and because we're gonna fill this with sugar paste, the rolled fondant, this is a large poly dowel, all right? So again, these are food grades, so you can also use these as well. All right, so basically what you do is you cut this to the depth of your cake. So I'm going to show you here um, on a cake here. So I've got here a tall cake here. So obviously I've cut this to basically just about the depth of the cake, all right? Um, and then what we would then do is you would take your straw and you take just some leftover sugar paste rolled fondant from the project. And then what I want to do here and you can actually do this in advance, all right? So you can actually, this can actually then set up and become hard. And so what you do is you're just gonna roll out your paste, just quite thick, like a little hamburger patty. And then on one end of this, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a plug, just a plug of the sugar paste like this, all right? So that's just gonna sit into the end there like so, all right? Um, now, once you've got this done, uh, usually I let this set, all right, because obviously if you let it set hard into there, but you don't usually have to use anything to glue it in. Um, and then what we want to do is you want to make a hole into the actual um, top of your cake. So you want to find something, this is a medium pin, something about the same proximate size as the straw. Things that work well around the house would be like a wooden spoon handle, you know, sort of just something, something that's about the same size as the diameter of this. All right, and then what you would then do is you would take your cake and with your cake there, you'd make a hole into the top of your cake and this would go through to the bottom of your cake. You take this out. So what this is doing is going to sort of accommodate your straw. And then um, you take your straw and you'd insert your straw into the cake, all right, which I've already got one in here. All right, so you insert this into the cake. So what that's gonna do, that's going to stop the, the cake going up into here. So you're just gonna make a hole and then put this in and you're just gonna push this in with your 
just to make sure it should be flush level. If it is a little bit tall, then just cut that off with a pair of scissors. These are very easy to cut. Now, what you then would do is you would take your, um, take your uh, spray. So I'm gonna show the, the spray I just finished with the David Austin Rose. And uh, what I have here is I have just a little piece of um, some sugar paste in the same color as I covered the cake with. So I'm gonna just take my, sort of check and see how that looks into the top here. All right, so it's gonna just sit into here like so. And remember this could go, of course, this would be like on the top tier of a wedding cake, but this could also go up against the side of the cake. So if you watch my foliage uh, video, and then all I'm gonna do here is if you have, a, if it's a little bit loose, all right, and usually just to fill this in, you're just gonna take just a little tiny piece of your paste, and then using like your Dresden tool, you're just gonna just push this into the back here, like so. All right, so just gonna just, and you're just gonna fill that in with a little bit of your paste like this, all right? So what you're doing is you're just filling in the back part there flush. And if you have too much paste, you could just use like a little scraper just to uh, trim, trim that off. So using your little Flower Pro scraper, just if you've got too much paste there, you're just gonna just trim that off. You see, so I've just done that on the, um, just on one side of it. And that just helps to make that nice and secure on the top of the cake. So you see that's, that's not going anywhere, it's nice and stable. Um, and that is how you would prepare your uh, piece will go into a cake. But remember, you should never put things directly into the cake surface. You always need to use, um, obviously, a straw, all right? But I said, very easy to find. And uh, what this will do, this will obviously give you a food safe barrier between your, you know, your acrylic or your MDF and your, uh, obviously, cake. All right, so that would be sort of, of course, like if this was a single tier, it's gonna be like, for example, like a anniversary cake. Um, you know, you could put this obviously on a nice pedestal stand but this is how you would um, obviously use, put this on your cake, all right? So here you can see you have the beautiful, um, as I said, the Flower Pro uh, Easy Flower Hoop. And um, once you get it into position, you can then obviously just tweak this and move things around as needed. And uh, of course you could also like on the back here, if you needed to, you could tuck some more smaller leaves, all right? So uh, if you, you know, of course, most times you're not gonna see the back of this because typically at a wedding, a cake is often set up. But if the cake was say in the middle of the room, then what you could do is you could also do almost like another smaller version on the back here. And you could just use some small little filler flowers. You could then tuck in some leaves and foliage here, and then obviously some more ribbons if needed. Um, so that is how you would put the flowers um, onto a cake. So when you of course take the flowers off the cake, when you take them out of the straw, then you could use a little, like for example, acrylic stand. So this type of little stand we could use. And then of course you could just pop that into there. And then uh, again, you could put a little tiny bit of paste in there or go around a couple of times with some floral tape to make it stable. But of course then the client could keep this like on say, a, a, you know, sort of in a bathroom, like this is obviously air drying clay. So these type of flowers could be kept in a bedroom or a bathroom. You could obviously put this in a little stand. You can also, uh, for example, use a flower vase. So for example, you could take a, this is just a vase. And what I've done there is I've put some um, ceramic, these are just ceramic baking beans, all right? You can also use things like rice and things like that. Um, I've also put a straw in there, all right? So basically, with, with a straw in there. So again, you could take this off. And then again, this could just go into here like this. So again, somebody could then use that as a, uh, as I said, as a, as a display, you see? So you're just gonna put that into there, just sort of make sure you just move things so that there, everything sort of sits into there. So you could have that into, into a display. Um, you can also use, uh, for example, other things, like you can take just like a, like a flower pot, you could put some styrofoam in the bottom of this, some styrene, some styrofoam. You could fill this with, uh, for example, little pebbles. You can also buy, uh, for example, this is uh, like, for example, vase filler. It's sort of like basically like a, almost a colored sand used to fill flower vases. You could use a crystal vase and you could then put little glass beads in there. Just something to give weight and stability because obviously if it just sits in a vase, it's gonna go. And then you can use, this is actually is for uh, putting pencils in. Um, so it's like actually like a little pencil to put small pencils in. And you can also just do things like this. I filled this with rice. I just cut a little um, rectangle in the top here. So again, you see, then I could just take this and then my 
arrangement could just go into here. So again, if you had a sort of that was your color scheme, um, this would be uh, obviously fun fun way for uh, somebody to take this off of the cake and then be able to keep these. But as I said, these can be used on uh, home decor. And then the other thing with this is, is you could actually put this into, a, for example, a grapevine wreath. You could obviously, as I said, add other elements here, little bows and things to this as well. Um, so this is sort of how you would, uh, generally when you take it off of the cake, this is sort of how you would then display them. So I hope you've enjoyed this video of how to use my Flower Pro Easy Flower Hoops which will give your flowers a real designer look with a light and look like a pros made them very easily. Uh, remember, these can be made with obviously air drying clay, you can make them with sugar. Um, and I hope you'll have a lot of fun, obviously, um, obviously using them, whether it's the MDF, the clear or the uh, silver uh, mirror finish one, uh, whatever type of design. Remember, it can be used contemporary, more rustic, uh, traditional. So have a lot of fun. So till next time, this has been Chef Nicholas Lodge. Sweet wishes. See you soon. Bye bye.